It's your family tree, a mystery. Are you fascinated by genealogy? Well, hip, hip, hooray, let's talk DNA with Julie. The truth is in your genes. In Cut-Off Genes. <laughs> Welcome to Cut-Off Genes, the podcast that helps you find your truth using nothing but DNA. I'm Julie Dixon-Jackson, and I'm a genetic genealogist, henceforth known as a Gen Genie. And I'm Richard Castle, the co-host and producer of this podcast. Happy to be here. How are you doing, Julie? I'm doing well, and you? I'm doing great. I just got back from a little vacation. Where'd you go? We went to Paso Robles. It's like a, a oh, wi- sure. up in wine country. Yeah. So there's beautiful wineries, and we, we had um, two considerations. One... If the winery was dog friendly, we would go, and then mm-hmm. if the wine was good, so sure <laughs> to boot. And one of the days we went, it was super hot, like a hundred degrees hot. Yeah. So we drove out to Cambria, which is the beach, and, uh-huh. and we spent the day there, and Aww. it was so beautiful up there. I haven't uh, been up there in forever. I love it. It's funny when you haven't been a, away in a long time, and then you come back and you realize, oh my god, like, yeah. It, I need to do that more often because there are people I feel, going away right now. They're flying right above us. I know. I'm jealous of them. Can you hear them? They're all laughing at us from above. Oh, Burbank Airport. <laughs> I always laugh at, um, like, I have a friend that, that makes a joke that every time he comes back from a family trip, his sister always goes, back to reality. <laughs> as, That's if, her thing. As, if, as if she can't really appreciate that she had a good time. It's just the right. idea that it's over. And as if her life is so awful, too. Right, I know. Yeah. Do you, when you fly in, um, especially to Burbank, do you try to find your house? Yeah, I try to find the neighborhood. I mean, there's no way I could find the house. I found my house once. Get out. I did. Really? When I was flying out. Yeah. When I lived in Park La Brea, which um, for the people who are listening, <laughs> is like a big um, high rise complex in the mid mid city of Los Angeles. Right. I used to be able to see that, and I couldn't pick out my specific building because there was like well, you couldn't of them. miss yours. It's the only tall buildings around in that area, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and, and you can see it probably from space. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah, that was a little like rear window, you know, because it, it, all of the towers faced each other and you could see into all the apartments. They could see you. And it was, it, you just sort of lived with it because it was My very. My husband's favorite movie. It was like, we went to see Rear Window at Hollywood, at Forever. Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Now, folks listening, there's a ce- big cemetery in Hollywood with a lot of Hollywood stars. All the famous people are there. Are there. And then <laughs> they show movies at night on the, in the summer on this big, beautiful lawn. You're not like laying on any graves or anything. And they, they, um, show the film on the back of a mausoleum. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh. And it borders Paramount Studios. All right. So you're sitting there. It just feels real old Hollywood. It's very nostalgic. And, yeah. yeah. And of course, Grace Kelly is so beautiful in that movie. And I love Thelma Ritter and Jimmy Stewart. It was so good. That movie is, I, I think of nothing but my husband in that. The yeah. first gift I ever gave him was a framed poster of that, of that, um, whatever you call the the, like from the movie poster yeah, of it? Yeah, the movie a movie still. I love that. Yep. Yeah, we had a great time with like 4,000 other Angelinos sitting out there drinking wine and picnicking. And, um, you know, some people were imbibing other things, I'm sure. And uh, <laughs> from the smell of the pot. But anyway. Those were skunks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we have those too. <laughs> but we all loved it. What have you been up to? I have, uh, I had a really good morning. Um, I got a response from a letter I sent to uh, a biological mother. um, And it was a good response. So it just made my morning. It's... Now, it's, what kind of a letter? Like just saying, look, I have a client who's Right. Looking. So what happens is most of the time, especially when uh, the biological parent is older, um, I compose a letter to them. And I also have the adoptee compose a letter telling them about themselves and what they're looking for and, you know, all good things and put some pictures in there. Yeah. And, uh, and then I send it to them and I usually send it to them um, signature required so that I know they got it. Definitely. Yeah. And, um, you know, sometimes they ignore it altogether. Sometimes they send it back with a note that says, don't talk to me. <laughs> Please don't ever. Cease and desist. Like yes. we get from all the, like, um, Julie Andrews. Julie Andrews. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, um, <laughs> we didn't really get it. She, I would love to, you know, if I got a cease and desist from Julie Andrews, You'd I would frame it. I would frame yeah, it. I know. I, I would, would like post it on Facebook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look who doesn't want me near her. <laughs> 
or look who else doesn't want me near her. There you go. That's more like it. So that's exciting. So then. yeah, it was nice. And it was like, it was just very, um, you know, she said, good morning, Julie. I didn't want to take too long to get back to you, but, uh, I wanted to, wanted you to know this is all very shocking and sudden, but not in a bad way. So that's always good when, when they say not in a bad way. Right. Because you expect need, them to be they shocked. They just need some time. Exactly. Right. But she's going to call me this afternoon because she has questions. So oh. I'm really happy about oh, that. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you. I'm sure it's, it's partly in the way that you word things. I mean, you're, you're very, I'm sure you're very conscious of not trying to um, upset anybody Absolutely. unnecessarily. Absolutely. You know? And I try, I have to keep in mind, I, 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 I have grown uh, in my understanding of biological mothers since I've been doing this, I think. I bet. I've spoken about that before. How, how can you not? Yeah. You know? Right. It's like anybody who deals with people with that you've never met before. Yeah. Right. And suddenly you, you realize, oh, right. I have a lot in common with them or I understand mm-hmm. what they're going through, whereas before... Right. Know, that's kind of the beauty of making yeah. friends with people who are not like you. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so it's uh, it's a it's a happy thing. It's one of these things that I, I love what I do, um, but it I'm really put a lot of pressure on myself be, to be because I feel like I'm beholden to these people to do the best possible job I can for them. Yes. And leaving no stone unturned and all of this stuff, but they don't know what I'm doing. Right. I mean, I tell them as much as I can, but you know, if I did that, I would never be off the phone with them. <laughs> Everything that I was doing. Sure. Um, but, you know, I just want to do the best for everybody. And I just hope that they understand that sometimes it's it's just impossible. It's going to be an impossibility just because of circumstances and MPEs and right. different things yeah. like that. So, um, but, yeah, it's, it's, gosh, it's so interesting. Every case is so interesting. You'll have to keep me posted. Oh, I will. <laughs> I will. Oh, you know what? What? I am meeting my first ever... Well, I was going to say my first ever paternal cousin, but that's not true because I met somebody else uh, that I've spoken about before. But a paternal cousin. I'm meeting a uh, a paternal cousin who has become a great friend of mine. Oh. Uh, He's in Australia, and but he is he is he in L.A. right now, and we're going to have dinner together tonight. Oh, fun! Yeah, and he is one of on that side of the family on that leg. He's the one that I've been the most connected with, and we have the most in common, and. But, you, but just, you've never met... But we've never met in person. Right. Yeah. Have you met your brother? Nope. Oh, wow. Nope. I was planning a trip to Australia because of circumstances. Right. I can't go. But, yeah. you know, hopefully, hopefully. My brother was just in uh, England, and because I couldn't be there, because we originally were planning on meeting there and uh, tracing the footsteps of our of our ancestors, because right. I know all the places. Mm-hmm. Um so he was there, so I just I just told him where to go. <laughs> just gave him <laughs> and a list, what to ask. Just gave him a list of bars. <laughs> yes, exactly. There was only one that he actually went to. But it was, you know, I, I wish I could I didn't he was there with his family. I didn't want to send him on crazy escapades. Oh yeah, but, sure. But yeah. that's nice. How exciting to meet somebody you've never met that you have a relationship with. It's it's almost like a pen pal or you know, how how yeah. weird but right from the old days, like when you would finally meet someone in person that you'd only corresponded with. Yeah. But it's a little different now because you can chat like uh, you know like your old Skype friends and all that stuff. Exactly. Yeah, isn't that funny? The world is a much smaller place now because of all the technology. It is. But I remember having like a friend that would come and visit his grandmother when I was a little kid. His grandmother lived down the street from me, and we, he would come every summer for like a week, and we were like best friends, oh, you know. Best. And then we would write to each other. Remember letters? Like I do. Yeah. I had. I I was a big letter writer. Were you? Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. I was. I was. I too. loved writing. Letters. I loved getting a letter. You know, it was so it's exciting best. when you finally had mail. Remember when you were a kid and you got mail? It was the most exciting thing ever. It is the now best. Now I'm like, oh god, it's all junk and bills. <gasps> My friend Sharon, <laughs> road trip Sharon from yes, Australia. Yes. She. Uh, when I was in Australia with her last, she gave me a bunch of letters that I had written to her, and they're hilarious. I love that people keep them, too, yes. right? A friend of mine told me recently, too, that that uh, when we were in college, because it's a long time ago, again, before yeah. email, he kept all the letters that I wrote to him, and he still has them. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know if I want to see them. Yeah, isn't that funny? <laughs> You do though. I do, I do, but do. then it will make me feel it's, so much nostalgia. It's very humiliating. I mean, to read it, it's hilarious and humiliating at the same time. I think I know what you mean, but what do you mean about <laughs> humiliating? 
just the way you talk and the things you say because you want to be cool and you use the vernacular of the day. Like we used to talk about like going out on a Friday night, we would call raging. <laughs> and you were having totally tubular times. We were going to the mall. No, that was even before the tubular oh, stuff. Okay. Yeah. Hey, I have, I have an addendum to the Jonathan Jackson story. Uh, remind me of that. Um, we were talking about people with celebrity names and people calling them. Remember you had a friend, Steve Perry? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and Jonathan Jackson, who played Lucky on... Okay, yes. I remember And this uh, he, they would call our house because his father's name was Richard Jackson, and that is my husband's first name. And I started telling them that he's passed away. Because um, <laughs> you're, you're so kind. Yes, because I'm so kind. Um, so I forgot to mention the other weird thing about this. There's always some kind of weird thing in my stories I think you may have noticed. Uh -huh. But he played Lucky on General Hospital. My husband's name is Lucky. Right. He goes by Lucky Jackson. I know. Isn't that crazy? That is weird. Yeah. I just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> he doesn't. He's not still working, is he, this actor? Yes, he oh. was in... He was in um, he was in uh, Nashville. Really? Yes. Well, there you go. Yeah, he had he had a love scene with my daughter's friend's mother. Oh, how disturbing! <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd throw that in there yeah. too. <laughs> Hollywood is so incestual that way. <laughs> <laughs> incestuous. Oh, incest. Oh, <gasps> I gotcha. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad I don't have to wait for a corrections corner. <laughs> All right. So, uh, are we ready for a break? I think we are. I think we are. I'm going to go study my vocabulary. <laughs> if you're enjoying Cut Off Jeans, please subscribe, rate, and review. Now, back to Julie and me. All right. We're back. We are back. Julie. Yes. I forgot to uh, mention this uh, in our last segment, but um, congratulations on being on that other podcast. I listened to you when you were interviewed. Oh, with Deirdre. Uh, yes. What yeah. was the name of that podcast? The Magnificent Aging Podcast. Yeah. I'm in a podcast about aging. Well, you know, we're all aging. I may as well our... do Menopause the Musical now. <laughs> <laughs> I swore I would never do that, but... Well, you maybe know. things change. Yeah. But you, I, I thought it was a really nice interview <laughs> and you, you got to talk about the podcast and your story and, and you know, it's, yes. it's nice that maybe other people who don't know about our podcast will come and maybe give yeah. us a listen. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. And give Deirdre a listen too. She's Deirdre is a professional organizer, which gives me anxiety just thinking about. <laughs> and she lives on the East Coast, so which is good because that way she will never go to my house probably. <laughs> to see how disorganized you are. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have so much anxiety about that, especially with people that are super organized. Uh, yeah. So anyway. But anyway, congratulations. It was nice to hear you on another podcast. Thanks. It was nice being on another <laughs> podcast. So you know how I talked about my husband's drawer full of teeth next to the bed? Oh, yes. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I'm afraid I know what you're going to say <laughs> because I saw our <laughs> Facebook group and I saw what you posted. I, 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 first I of all, I have to say I regret posting that because it grosses me out every time I look at it, too. Well, let's tell our unlucky listeners what you, what you posted. So somebody makes jewelry out of, it looks like molars. Yeah, human molars. Human molars. Yes. And um, when I was talking about making jewelry of my children's teeth, it wasn't molars, first of all. What was it? It was like the little pointy ones. <laughs> you mean like... Am I digging myself deeper? <laughs> yeah. You mean like basically like a shark tooth? <laughs> yeah, like a shark tooth, shark tooth necklace. Okay. No, I was thinking like earrings, like the little baby teeth. Oh, I don't know. Boy. I won't do it. Yeah. But so, yeah, everybody was appropriately grossed out by that. Um, but I did happen across this interesting article this week. Okay. So there is a method to the madness. <laughs> Good. Um, doctors are urging parents everywhere to keep their baby's teeth. Why are they doing that? Because they have DNA in them and stem cells. In, in the bone, really? Yeah. In the teeth? Yeah. Wow. In a study in 2003, I mean, that was a long time ago. Why is this happening now? Showed that baby teeth are a rich source of stem cells, which are like protocells that can be grown into multiple kinds of cells if needed. In baby teeth? Yes. That means that later, if later in life a child needs replacement tissue for whatever reason, the stem cells from their baby teeth can be used to grow the needed tissue. Oh, my God. Remember they were doing cord blood? Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Th that's not necessary. Just keep your, just preserve your baby teeth. Uh, now you tell me. Well, and that's, <laughs> therein lies the rub. 
I do have a drawer full of, of baby teeth. However, they have to be stored correctly. <laughs> oh, I guess a drawer in your husband's office is not quite the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not in, It's next to the bed, oh. not even in the office. It's uh, always good to keep it close. <laughs> right. So, so if they're preserved quickly after falling out, they can be stored for years and kept in case of later medical needs, blah, blah, blah. But they have to be stored correctly. But what does that mean? Like stored in what? Like in refrigerator? Or? Probably a medical grade storage right. something because, you know, if it's just out or in a drawer, the stem cells degrade and lose their potency over time. Mm, mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Well, I was just going to say you could always just take it off, off your earring and say, oh, go ahead. My, you know, my daughter needs her stem cells. <laughs> Here, take this. <laughs> She's super mom. Just a horrifying I just happen everybody. to have your stem cells hanging from my ear. <laughs> now you can grow that new spleen, da- daughter. Spleen! <laughs> I don't know. Can you grow a spleen? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, I you know maybe Sweet. somebody else knows better. I'm not a anything in the medical <laughs> or scientific profession. All right. So moving on, this is exciting. In an apparent first, genetic genealogy aids a wrongful conviction case. Oh, it got somebody out of jail who was con- who's been there for twenty years. Oh my god, twenty! Isn't that horrifying? Horrifying. I mean, it's great that it's done, but it's horrifying that somebody spent all those right. years wasted. It, all it those just years. shows the power of genetic genealogy too. Yeah. It's it's incredible. An Idaho judge dismissed all charges against Christopher Tapp, who was wrongfully convicted in the 1996 rape and murder of 18-year-old Angie Dodge. Wow. Um, yeah, 20 years. Uh, the judge says there's clear and convincing evidence that Christopher Tapp uh, was wrong- wrongly convicted. How did this come about? So uh, the mother... Actually, Carol Dodge. The mother of the victim. Yes, the mother of the victim was, uh, she insisted that a genetic genealogist analyze DNA evidence in the case. So there was DNA evidence in at the time, and it did not match him. Okay. But because they had coerced a confession from him, oh, they yeah. threw that evidence out. Isn't that crazy? There's a lot of news about people so being much. You know, coerced into confessing. So much, and I'm going to get to that in a second. Uh, but Carol Dodge wanted to make sure that it was him, um, which it wasn't, and also felt that there were more than one person oh, so involved. She, so, so she, she w- wanted to catch the other guy. So too. she never. It wasn't her mission to get him out of jail. Like she, she always thought he he'd done it, and that there were other people. Who I had done think it. so because, yeah. but and but she thought that there were other people because the DNA didn't match him. I see. Yeah. Right. So. Um, Eventually, uh, they it matched another man, Brian Lee Drips Sr. After after confessing to the killing, Drips were charged in the rape and murder in May. Wow. Yeah. From from over twenty years ago, that is really something else. I mean, can you imagine being that mother? It's so it's a it's bad enough I that, that her level. daughter was murdered. Yeah. But then to find out that somebody was convicted of that crime and spent twenty years. Yeah. In prison yeah. for it. I mean, it's just a, it's a it compounds the tragedy. Right, right. And she uh, it, here's the thing. Um, it also highlights the longstanding issue of false confessions. Um, for over two decades, the problems with Chris's confession have been evident. Since since then, legal experts uh, have been scrutinizing the confession. And listen to this. Over three and a half weeks, Tapp was interrogated nine times for a total of 25 hours. Across those many hours, Tapp told six different stories. Wow. Um, police interrogators threatened him with a gas chamber or life in prison, attacked his memory, fed him information, administered various polygraph exams, promised immunity, and then threatened to take it away, pushed aside Tapp's claims of innocence, and offered leniency in exchange for a confession. Oh, my God. I mean, come on. You can, uh, we all know the story of the Central Park Five. Yes. It's, uh, this is, it's uh, rampant, and I think it's, I, I'm afraid to think of how many people are serving time because of that tactic. This is one of the reasons why I have, I do not believe in the death penalty uh-huh. because I feel like it's so irreverse, irreversible. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, I've never had anybody very close to me be murdered, mm-hmm. you know, in, in a way that would I could imagine where you would want vengeance. Yes. So I'm going to just say that without that, having that personal knowledge, thank God, I just feel like the there are too many errors that can be made, mm-hmm. you know, even 
before, especially before DNA, you know, right. to, to take someone's life. Because imagine if this guy who was in jail for 20 years had been killed yes. by the state because of that. Right. You know, it's just, oh. I'm waiting for the day that they, that DNA evidence uh, exonerates somebody who's already been uh, executed. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, it's probably happened, it's, I wonder. And they probably just haven't wanted to publish it. Well, somebody's going to publish it. Well, you know, um, Supreme former Supreme Court Justice, uh, was it uh, Stevens, that just passed away, mm-hmm. you know, he changed his um, stance, on, stance it. on the death penalty over the years. And to me, I think, well, that's the sign of a really good jurist, or not just a good jurist, a good human being, that takes in evidence and goes, mm-hmm. oh, maybe what I thought wasn't correct and right. changes your mind. It's right. not like, well, no, I believe this and it's, and no one's going to tell right. me anything that that's going to change that. You know, you no, you have to. That's kind of how, the, how life is supposed to work, isn't it? Ideally. <laughs> isn't that what speech and debate was all about? Right. I'm glad this man is, is free, you know, since he is not guilty and that they found the person who did it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so DNA, uh, DNA, uh, CeCe Moore is the one with, with, uh, Parabon Nano Labs is the one who did this again, CeCe, wow, at a girl. She's really, that's what a great work she's doing. She sure is. Um, and just another reminder, guys, if you would like to help exonerate people or solve cold cases, upload your raw DNA to GEDmatch and opt in for law enforcement, uh, accessibility because that uh, I spoke to CC and she said it's definitely taken a hit the amount of uh, of kits available to law enforcement to oh because of the the, be, the way be, they changed because they changed it to you have to go back and opt in now mm. and um, yeah. and like some people I, I assume you upload it and if you're not following it you don't necessarily even go back to jet match again you know i mean a lot of I, people think of how many websites you've had to sign in for something just for one time and, and you never, wouldn't even remember how to sign in again no or yeah. you just did never even go back again right. like oh well i just needed this one thing i'm never going to buy something from that store again yeah it's true you know so they uh so once they had nailed him they did test the dna that was at the scene and that's how cc figured out who it was using genetic genealogy. They did the same thing. They followed him. They picked up a discarded cigarette, and uh, the rest is history. Wow. Well, good for her, and I'm so happy to hear that someone has benefited from this new technology. Right. And I I hope that the cops who coerced the confession uh, have changed or considered changing their ways of uh, interrogating criminals or people that are brought in. Oh, yeah. There is something in here about that. They've changed the... The uh, it was in Idaho that this happened, and I think the police chief came out and said, "We've certainly since that time we've altered our ways of uh, getting confessions." Well, like you said, because we'll look at Central Park Five, and and, and a lot of people where they've had co- coerced confessions. You know, there's something wrong with the method that they're Absolutely. using. If that's the case, yeah. You know, and if there's several, a lot of cases that do the same thing. You know, we're, mm-hmm. we're you know, it's like the Salem witch trials. You know, if mm-hmm. if you if you say you're a witch. You know, then right. this. But if you don't yes. say you're a witch, we're going to kill you anyway. Right. We're going to throw you in the water. If you sink, you're not a witch. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm from Massachusetts, people. It's part of my <laughs> history, part of my lore. <laughs> All right. And on that note, let's take a break. Let's do that. Thank you for listening to Cut Off Jeans with Julie Dixon Jackson and Richard Castle. That's me. All right, it's story time. Yay! Who do we have today? This week we have uh, actually an old friend of mine, Jill Gounder, or Jillby Gounder, Jillby, I used to call her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jill happened to be in town, so I got to go to her house and interview her. And she has a terrific story uh, that is from a, a different angle. And um, I'm really thankful she decided to share it with everybody. She's, Jill is one scrappy lady. I'll tell you, and you'll, she's one of those people that has always been very impressive and that she is her own person and doesn't take crap from anybody. Uh, I wonder, she, yeah, no wonder why you get along. <laughs> <laughs> it's like looking in the mirror, apparently. <laughs> no, we're different, though. It's different. Is she? Uh, did you know her from Australia? You said she was no, in no, town. No, no, no. Uh, from, from theater. You'll see in okay. the interview. Oh, we'll, great. We'll, we're going to talk about oh, it. Great, I can't wait to hear it. All right, let's listen. Hey, everybody. I am sitting in the living room of my 
old friend. Now, when I say old, I mean we haven't seen each other in what? Decades. Decades. Since the early 90s. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We were on tour together with Jesus Christ Superstar. And um, Jill is, can I say what, can I say what you do? You can say anything Jill. you want. So <laughs> Jill is a, are you an ASM or an SM? Or? I retired from stage management 10 years ago. I'm now doing props. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, back then <laughs> right. you were an ASM mm-hmm. and a swing, mm-hmm. which I've never heard of before until that particular job, which meant that, you know, she did all the assistant stage manage- managing um, stuff. But then when there was more than than uh, more people out than we could handle, Jill would step in and she knew everybody's tracks as well. <laughs> I ended up being the dance captain, too. Hi. Jill has a great story that... Uh, and she, I got this message on Facebook one day, and she's like, I just, I just want to say thank you for what you do. And I'm like, what? What are you talking about? And then she told me this amazing thing. And I'm so happy she wants to talk about it because we have very few people in her position that are willing to talk about it and uh, take out the stigma. And we need to hear from a lot more um, biological moms, I think. So, Jill, please regale us with your story. Um, starting at the beginning, which is a very good place to start. 1983, I mm-hmm. found myself pregnant, mm-hmm. alone, unemployed, and mm-hmm. sitting in a one-bedroom apartment in North Hollywood with nothing in there but a plant stand to hold up the television and a futon. And I decided that is not the life I want for a child. And so I sought out the help of... Uh, my OBGYN, who knew of an attorney who would handle a closed adoption. And that's what we did. Okay. About two years later, I thought, you know, if I just had a picture of her every year on her birthday, mm. then I could probably rest easier than I am now. I know she's happy, know she's safe, know that everything is good in her Absolutely. life. Absolutely. And so um, I tried to enlist my now ex-husband to help me because... Every time I would try to do something or even think about it, it was still upsetting to me. And he said, let me call the attorney for you. I know this upsets you. And trusting him, I said, go ahead. He came back to me and said, the attorney is dead and the records are closed. (sighs) Okay. Complete and utter lie. Oh. Which I didn't know until my daughter and I connected. And she said, well, I tried finding you when I was like 14 and again at 19. And I'm like, wait. I was told the attorney was gone at your age, too. So this was the ex-husband's yeah. uh, uh, meddling, indeed, if you will. Indeed, indeed. Uh, again, which I didn't know. Do we know why he did that? Do we have any ideas? Alcoholic. Oh, fair enough. So, um, so I had to let it go for a little while. Um, and every once in a while, I would try something else. But, you know, pre-internet, it was really difficult. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then the hospital she was born in was no longer a hospital, so there was no recourse there I could find. Uh, I was told my OBGYN moved to the Bay Area, Mm -hmm. um, was never able to locate him. So I just, I kept running into walls head first. Um, And again, I had to put it down for self-preservation to just regroup. And then when I was ready to do something again, anything, um, internet came along Mm -hmm. and adopted.com. Uh, I guess because of the A was the first thing I came upon. Right. And they asked for your story. I explored that too. Did you? Yeah, before DNA. I, yeah. I put my story on there as they well. They asked for, you know, whatever information you mm-hmm. have and details and what, you know, create your story profile. Mm-hmm. And I did. And that was 2017, I guess, March of 2017. Okay. Almost two years to the day. Mm-hmm. I was always getting you know, emails saying, what about this one? We have a message from adopted.com and I'd open it and say, look at the match we made. I'm like, well, that's not me. That's not, that's not even close. This went on, you know, (laughs) two, three, four times a year to the point where I was like, yeah, delete, delete, delete. But this one time I got this message two days before exactly two years that I was on the site. Okay. And it said, hi, my name, I'm C Hodges and our stories sound a little bit similar, and I was wondering if you would mind answering a few more questions. A few more questions led to me leaping into the other room to get the file out of my file cabinet, mm-hmm. and I finally just spelled out all the 
all the information that I had had at the time because I, I asked questions, I got answers, I put it in the file, yes. and I put it away. Yep. So I just spewed all, you know, just all the information I had, and she said, how do you know all this? I said, I wrote it down 36 years ago. That pretty much clinched 99% of it. Okay. We decided to do the DNA for that extra... One percent, just so nobody could say. Hmm. So she already knew that she'd been born in that hospital on that day. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I but would say that's ninety nine point nine nine. And then the next morning, when she woke her parents up to say, "I think I found my mom," her father said, "Ask her if she ever did a vita overseas." <gasps> because when I called the attorney to ask him a question, right, not too long after you were born, he told me that. He couldn't contact you, you be- because you were overseas with Evita. I got chills when you said that, and by I the way. said, <laughs> why, yes, yes, I did. <laughs> and so that was, you know, now we only need the DNA yeah, for yeah, that yeah. last point. Well, one, just, to, yes, it's, it's good to have. <laughs> and, I mean, I had never done it because that never occurred to me. Didn't, you yeah. know, and then people say, oh, my God, don't do that. They have your information. They can't, you know, and then you you've stop thinking about that for a minute. And you go, okay, well, maybe I yeah. shouldn't. I, anyway, so I did that. By the way. If they want the, your information, they'll get it. They already have it. The end. Okay, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> they already have it. Yes. So in doing that, we not only did we confirm, but then you know anybody else who has done the DNA that has the matches mm-hmm. go, okay, you've got a 2.25% match with this person. Your great-grandparents are, you know, in, in line. So you found more stuff out about your family. I found family. a second cousin once removed mm-hmm. that lives two miles down the street. Love it. So I, we've connected with her. Actually, Carolyn connected with her because of the DNA first. Couldn't figure out how they were related. Right. And then I showed up. So uh, March 14th, 2019, says so on our matching necklaces Aww. that she gave me for Mother's oh, Day. I love that. I know. Oh, that's um, beautiful. Awesome. Uh, we, we connected. Literally, it was six hours from I got that first message until we were off the site, off 23andMe, and on Messenger talking mm. and then she said well I, I gotta go to bed I gotta go to bed and then not 15 minutes later she said okay my husband's asleep now that sounds <laughs> familiar <laughs> okay <laughs> and we talked a, a lot longer and then you know first thing in the morning uh she had called her parents and everybody was just thrilled beyond belief oh that's heaven and and the relationship that she and I built before we met mm-hmm. was spectacular can't believe how much we can't say sounded alike but you know when you're when you're texting back and forth or you know on messenger back mm-hmm. and forth you know, the same sense of humor yes, yes. the same yeah. kind of of colored comments yeah, that are yeah, okay yeah. with the two of us right um, right you know are you little i'm little do you have little feet i have little feet do you have little hands i have little you hands? have like size five feet don't you yeah so yeah. does she <laughs> even we, we looked at our <laughs> right we looked at our wedding rings and i thought oh my god there's they're both little i can't even get her wedding ring on oh, that's how wow. little her fingers are she's bitty yeah she's wow. itty bitty yeah okay so then now she just was here she was just here she and her husband flew in on the fourth of july Ugh. um that was like nothing you can describe yeah um we have we have Video documentation, thank goodness, because we don't remember a whole lot of that first 10 minutes. Oh, my gosh. Um, there was a lot of hyperventilating and sobbing in each mm-hmm. other's ear, trying to say something. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think when she finally backed up, she looked at me and said, nice face. Aww. <laughs> Which kind of looks like hers. So. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And uh, where does she live now? Where did she grow up? Uh, she grew Well, there's several places. Okay. Um, I believe when she left here, she went to Kansas, and somewhere in there is Cleveland, and somewhere in there is... Okay. You know, so her parents were living here at the time? No. Oh. Her mom got a phone call. While they were at the movies, she came home to a message on the answering machine that said, it's a girl, come get her. <gasps> uh, so they were in Kansas at the time, and they wow. literally had nothing ready, nothing prepared, nothing... I mean, the, the, we laugh because there's a picture of her riding f- home on the plane mm-hmm. in the magazine rack because they didn't have anything <laughs> right. to put her in. Right. Plus, they are, they obviously have been open from the beginning uh, uh, with her about it, yes. which I love. Do you get any sense that they felt threatened at all, or not um, for a second? Not for oh, one that's second. That's great. That's she great. has an older brother who's also adopted. Mm-hmm. Um, he is still working on finding his. Okay. His family. And, Has he done and, DNA? 
Uh, I don't know. Okay, tell her she needs to tell him to do DNA. I think you just did. Okay, good. Because she'll be listening. Very good. And um, so can we go back to when you were pregnant? Sure. Again, let's go back to um, while, tell me what you can remember of it about your state of mind and how you came to the decision to give her up and what that was like, if you can. Well, there was a whole lot of months of denial. Mm -hmm. That you were even pregnant? Yeah. 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 You know, we dancers, Mm -hmm. nothing was ever normal in our bodies. Right. You know? Yes, that makes perfect sense. Nothing was ever normal in our bodies. Yep. And so I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. Oh, well, whatever. Mm -hmm. But once once she moved, I went, oh. Oh, whoops. Uh Yeah, there it is. Um, And like I said, I looked around and thought, no, this is not, this is not what I want for my child. And I will do everything I can from this moment on to get her to a life she should have. Um, Were you, was, was that difficult for you? Did you waffle back and forth or? It was, yes, it was awful. Yeah. Um, and I, I remember the attending nurse asking me if I wanted to hold my baby, if I wanted to see my baby. And mm-hmm. I said, no. Yep. I said, I can't. Because if I do. Mm-hmm. You won't let go. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Interesting. Yeah. So now what? Now what? I, one of my first thoughts was, and I expressed to her, I said, mm-hmm. you know, I, I have missed out on so much of your life. And I, that almost makes me nauseous to mm-hmm. still to think about it. Um, but I'm, you know, glad what you, what you had was, was good mm-hmm. and, and true and right and happy. Um, and she said, well, I haven't had kids yet. You haven't missed that now, have you? And I just went, okay, I'm good. Yeah, you're going to be a grandma someday. Yep. Oh, I never, great. and that's something I never thought I would right. experience. Was it, did you make a conscious choice to not have kids throughout your life? No. No? No. Okay. It was, um, uh, I had another pregnancy gone horribly planned. Okay. And that ended my mom career. Gotcha. Um, tell me a little bit about your thoughts now that you've been there. Uh, on nature versus nurture. I mean, you haven't, you have a long way to go before you really, you know, know each other. Um, But what are your immediate thoughts on nature versus nurture? Nature has steamrolled us Mm -hmm. completely. I mean, you know, when we first started chatting online, you go, that sounds like something I'd say. Wow, that, whoa, that's genetic. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And yet, when I first heard her speak, she sent me some little video, uh, totally unrelated. I mean, it, I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me mm-hmm. that I was going to hear her voice for the first time. And my husband Jody and I were sitting there, and we both just snapped our necks to each other and went, she sounds just like me. That's crazy, isn't it? It's totally crazy. Yeah. Laughs like me, sounds like me. Yep. Um, and over the, over the weekend that she was here, um, I had a party. I had a baby shower for her. Sure. In my as backyard. You <laughs> as you do when you're 36. <laughs> um, and so many of my friends that I've known f- for even longer than I've known you mm-hmm. would step out the door, stand there, and observe her in the backyard and go, oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. That must be incredibly cool for her, too. Right. Yeah. Right. Because that I was, the, I was the same way. I mean, the first... I met my mother before I had kids, but... Even looking at my own kids, I, you know, somebody will come that knew me before I had kids and see my daughter on stage and go, you do that. You stand like that. Why? It's amazing. Right. right. And that's what I was missing out uh, on so much as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, you know, we, we all, we... We all know that we love our parents. This is not... You have enough love for both. It's not either or. Um, and... You know, I certainly learned things from my parents that uh, I would have made me somewhat of a different person than uh, if I'd stayed with my biological mother. Um, but ultimately, I, I agree with you. I think that I think that uh, nature wins out hands down, and I think we are who we are w- when we're born. She dances. We were standing in the ladies' room at Dodger Stadium on the 4th of July, and I looked over, and we're both standing in fourth position. Right. <laughs> Did she dance as a kid? Did she take dance? And Yeah. Palm Squad in, in oh, high school. love it. Uh, yeah. Love it. Yeah. Had she ever wanted to do it professionally? I don't think so. Okay. Not that, not that I'm aware of. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. She's just a natural little yeah. dancer. Um, also for Mother's Day, her <coughs> her mother, and again, I say her mother is truly, both her parents are just truly, truly amazing throughout this whole thing. This is a dream situation. It's complete dream. Yeah. And also for Mother's Day, her mother put together two photo albums for <sighs> me from the day they took her from the hospital <gasps> all the way through birthdays, I just got chills beach, again. <laughs> vacations. I know, right? Yeah. And uh, I turned the page, and and I was, you know, I was just having a great time looking at these because mm -hmm. I'm I'm sitting having coffee watching my child grow up. Oh. And I turned the page, and there's her in a little tutu with a oh. spider web on the front of the leotard under the tutu with her arms up in the air. And I went, okay, okay, I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> I can't. All right, that is the end of part one. Oh, I can't wait to hear more. Yeah. Jill's great. It's fun. It's fun to hear old friends get together, too. It sure is. I'm so glad we got to do it in person, too, because yeah, I haven't nice. seen her in so long. And it's true, you guys. She does not look a day over the age she looked when we worked together 25 years ago. And even then, she didn't look a day over 18. It's crazy. <laughs> and frankly, unfair. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to hear the rest of that next week. And then after that, we're going to hear from her daughter. Oh my God! Yay. I love this whole Rashomon type thing where we hear the story, the same, a similar story or I do too. a different point of view. Yeah, it's fun. it is fun. Yeah, should we get out of here? Let's do it. In that case, I am Richard Castle, and I'm when I'm not producing and co-hosting this podcast with you, Julie. I am a musician and a composer and a songwriter. And you can follow me on Twitter at Castle Songs, or you can go to my website, richardcastle.com. I'm Julie Dixon Jackson. You can follow me on Twitter at Jules Jackson with two O's. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Cut Off Jeans Pod. Join the Facebook group, Cut Off Jeans Podcast. Answer the question. People say such nice things. It's kind of like a little ego boost for me every time. Uh, no <laughs> wonder why you do it. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> no, you know, everybody on the Facebook page is so nice. I mean, I, you know, I, I belong to some other Facebook groups. and it can Not get, so much. It can get ugly like surprisingly ugly when somebody makes a comment or something and it oh, goes yeah. you know but i feel like everybody is literally on the same page in this group literally so, so far all right so uh hey should we get out of here let's do that hey julie yeah where, where did i put my truth Ugh, the truth is in your jeans. Mm -hmm.